This is the Sovol SV01, and it's my very first 3D printer. What I want to show you in this video is two things that I had to do to get my Sovol SV01 set up and working at its best. The installation manual is pretty good, but it leaves out uh, details about how to adjust the Z-axis limit switch the best. And if you're going to be printing flex filament, you have to install a, P a piece of PTFE tubing in the extruder or the flex filament kind of spirals up inside it and doesn't come out. This is something that Sovol says they're going to start doing from the factory or they're going to like redesign the extruder so you don't need it. But if you've already got a Sovol or if you've bought one recently you, and you're having trouble printing flex filament like uh, TPU, you should do this. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. Here's the Z-axis limit switch, and it controls how far down the gantry is allowed to go. And of course, the purpose of the Z-axis limit switch is to prevent the nozzle from crashing into the bed and damaging your nice glass bed surface. And you might think it doesn't really matter where you place that as long as you make sure that the nozzle doesn't crash. But the best performance is going to be had if these springs underneath the bed are as compressed and tight as they can possibly be because that will prevent the bed from kind of moving up and down as the print is happening. So what you want to do is you want to find the lowest possible position for the z-axis limit switch that still prevents the bed from crashing and it gives you just a little bit of adjustment with the springs to get your bed leveled. So the first thing you're going to do is tighten these screws all the way down. There's four screws, one on each corner of the bed, and you're going to tighten them down so that the springs are fully compressed. In order to move the bed, you can go prepare, disable steppers, and that'll allow you to easily move the bed with your hands. Then we're going to set the z-axis limit switch so that it is clearly above the level of the bed. And you can see that's not true for my z-axis limit switch because I've already adjusted it to exactly where it needs to be. But in order to make sure that you don't accidentally crash your nozzle, set that z-axis limit switch so it's level with or slightly above the level of the bed. And then auto home. Now the goal is going to be to get the nozzle as close to the bed as you can while still giving you a little bit of adjustment with the springs so you can level the bed. So here you can see I've got maybe two or three millimeters of spacing. If you have more spacing than that, if your nozzle is higher, just loosen the screws on the z-axis, lower it by a couple of millimeters, and redo the auto home process. And each time you do that, the nozzle will move slightly lower, slightly lower. Just go slowly and only lower the z-axis limit switch a little bit until you end up in a situation kind of like this, where you've got just a couple millimeters of space, as little as possible, between the z-axis, uh, between the bed and the nozzle. The next thing you need to do is level the bed. And there's tons of great guides on the internet for leveling the bed, so I'm not going to just repeat stuff that's already been said elsewhere. I found that I got the best results by using a single sheet of paper folded in half. A lot of guides will say uh, to use a single sheet of paper only, but I found that put the nozzle too close to the bed. Uh, so that's, that's where I got the best results. The other thing I noticed that might not be obvious the first time you're doing it is, as you're turning this, these wheels, if you, well these are fully compressed, let me loosen this up a little. As you're turning the wheel to level the bed, if you press down on the wheel, can you see that that's moving the bed? I was originally kind of pushing on the wheel like this and moving it. I'm exaggerating, but I was throwing off my results. So as you turn the wheels, make sure you push gently from the side and don't actually push down or affect the bed level as you're getting the spacing exactly right. Now, if you're trying to print flex filament and it is spiraling up inside the extruder, you need to insert a piece of PTFE tubing, also known as Capricorn tubing, and here's how to do that. The first thing I'm going to need to do is unload the filament from my extruder and I'm going to do that by going to prepare and preheat PLA end and that's going to heat up the uh, nozzle so that I can remove the filament from it without it getting stuck or breaking off inside the nozzle. Once the nozzle comes up to temperature I'm going to pull on this lever to release the spring tension on the extruder drive gear and I'm going to push a little bit of filament in 
so that it comes out the nozzle and then quickly draw it out. The next thing to do is to raise the z-axis just a little bit to give you some room to work. You can do that in prepare, move axis, move z-axis. And I'm gonna put a towel to protect the bed surface while I work. Then I'm gonna turn the machine off. Next step is to remove the part cooling fan. And in order to do that, I'm gonna remove these three screws, one, two, three, with an M3 driver. Next, we need to remove this cover for the heat sink. And in order to do that, we're gonna remove this screw. And on the other side, we're gonna remove these two screws. I'm gonna support this as it comes loose. This cover is gonna come off and the fan is gonna hang loose and we'll just set hang that over the X gantry. This is the cooling fan for the heat sink and that just is clipped on and we can carefully pull that off. It just comes off like so. At this point, I'm gonna unplug the X axis stepper motor to, oh no, that's the extruder, my bad. <laughs> I'm gonna unplug the extruder motor just to get that wire out of the way. And the next thing I need to do is remove this cover of the extruder by removing one, two, three screws. Okay. You're gonna wanna be careful with this spring. Don't let that spring pop out and surprise you, but if you don't screw with that, <laughs> I think you should be okay, screw. <laughs> I think you should be okay. Also, uh, in case it doesn't go without saying, give your hot end time to cool down or you will be very unhappy when you try and grab this and get it out. Also, this part was not obvious to me when I first did this. Uh, this wiring going into the hot end is very fragile. There is a temperature sensor in here and the wiring can break very easily. And so you wanna be really, really careful not to like screw with this wiring and damage it. If you finish this process and when you're done, your hot end won't heat up, it just reads zero or whatever, then you have broken it and that would be a shame. Now this right here is the piece you wanna get out and it is sort of friction fit in I couldn't really get it out without just removing the heat sink. So what seemed to work the best for me was to just carefully sort of rotate the heat sink and wiggle it out. There we go. And that is the piece that we want. And I guess I'm just gonna like very carefully set this up on top so it's out of the way and not stressing the wires at all. Now this here's the stuff that you're gonna wanna insert into this little plastic uh, piece and it's called Capricorn tubing. Uh, you can get generic PTFE tubing, but this is supposed to be like the best, I don't know. It's about 10 bucks for this length and I just figured that was a fair deal. It also comes with this cutter it's very important that when you cut the tubing it be completely sort of perpendicular and straight so you are not going to want to do not use like a set of diagonal cutters to do this it'll crush it but you're going to want to measure off uh, 19 millimeters of this and you're going to want to cut it as precisely as you can using this cutter okay and when that's done what you're going to find is I found that it's, it fits in just about perfectly with just a little bit sticking out. If you don't have a cutter like that, you can use a utility knife and you can just insert the tubing into this piece and cut it flush. But there's actually a little bit of a bevel here on the heat sink, so it seemed to me like having it stick out just a tiny bit would help it. I basically cut it so I could get these pieces completely flush and uh, there you go. And then you just put the whole thing back together the way that it was. One thing to keep in mind is that the screws for the part cooling fan, two of them are shorter and one is longer. And the reason for that is that one of those screws has to go through the actual fan guide. So make sure you put the longer one in the correct position. I'm actually gonna install this part cooling uh, fan guide. So I'm not gonna put this back together on camera. This is gonna hit the part with air from two sides and I've got an upgraded more powerful fan. So 
Well, maybe it'll be in another video. That's gonna do it for this video. Look forward to more 3D printing content on the channel. In fact, this guy behind me, this Ender 3, I'm gonna be working on, is that better than the Sovol? What do you care? You already have a Sovol if you're watching this. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Happy, happy, I always say happy flying at the end of my videos. Happy printing. Thank you.